Businesses for sale. This is where I run through the emails that have been sent to me from my filters on bizbuysell.com. And when I go through them, I give my anecdotes, my two cents on the businesses that are listed and what I think about them. So here we go. Let's jump into my email and see what we got. Now, it's been about a week since I've gone through these. So today is, I think, the 16th. I'm going to go back. And well, if we go back to the 14th, well, that's almost 100 of them. I don't know if I'm going to put all 100 of them on camera, but we'll start right here with the 14th. And this one, leading provider of residential cabinetry and countertops. That might be okay, but that's probably not something I'm interested in. Reclaimed wood manufacturer, 30% growth, uh, $1.46 million seller discretionary earnings. This is a very interesting business, but I can't say that I'm too interested in it because you know, we know that wood has just kind of had a ballooning in price of over the last year or two. So, I mean, it went up, the underlying commodity went up, but behind that, I'm sure the manu or the, the vendors of it, like this company, raised their prices of it, but I don't know if that's gone down with the price of it going down. So, uh, I am not too interested in this one, but that's an interesting business. It's an interesting business to know about, but not for me to look at. Orange Theory Fitness Franchise, I actually go to Orange Theory but I'm not interested in buying a franchise. All right. High volume smart home business in Southern New Hampshire. This one looks kind of good. Let's learn a little bit more about this. All right, so asking 635,000, cash flowing 180,000. So they're looking for a four X on this. Uh, and we've got FF and E of 100K there, so probably a couple trucks and some light duty equipment. High volume smart home business in southern New Hampshire. Great company to acquire a growing business that is highly recommended by its clients. It's an ideal acquisition for a company that provides services to residential customers and is seeking to increase its offering of revenues to new and existing customers or for a buyer seeking a stable business with tenured staff. Okay, so what I'm wondering here is how many years have been in business? So 20 years. Uh, and how many staff do they have? It says tenured staff, but it doesn't. Usually down here it says staff or employee count. It doesn't say that. Uh, what is this up? Uh, it's just a typical non-disclosure agreement. So not much information here. Uh, if I were interested in going to Southern New Hampshire, I might be more interested in this. Seems like this could be a good business. I do think that the smart home services is a very growing market. And there's always, the thing about it is that there's always new tech coming up, right? It's not like, uh, like I owned a screen enclosure business or I owned an epoxy flooring business. I still own epoxy flooring businesses um, and I'm looking to acquire more, but you get those and they're one and done types of services. This, there's like a perpetually innovating product curve and product release behind it. That's a pretty interesting business. Flooring, outdoor power equipment deal, Atlantic Coast Sailing School. That's an interesting one, but I don't think that's for me. I feel like a, a sailing school, you would have to have a passion for sailing to be in it. And quite frankly, you know, I, I, I have my passions. I know what they are. I don't have enough time to even fulfill my passions. And I do have a lot of time to do them. Um, so yeah, I'm not too interested in that. Home improvement independent dealer. I don't, I don't know what that could mean. Just like a regular contractor. Not seeing anything that catches my eye there. Well-known behavioral health practice. Uh, behavioral health practices I know are growing in popularity. A lot of people think you know that they really need to go see a shrink all the time, and maybe I'm just being insensitive. Um, but you know I'm not really big into that space. But I do know that these things are growing rapidly. The people I know that are succeeding with them are either A, large private equity companies, or B, I do know of one scenario where a guy bought one, but his wife was a licensed behavioral health therapist or whatever. So probably not for me. Dessert business, sports bar, coin laundromat. Don't know. Yeah, all right. Don't know which ones these came across, but I get a ton of filters in here. Strategic opportunity to acquire niche OEM manufacturer. That could be an interesting one. There's our sailing school again. 
niche manufacturing and assembly business. It's only 380000 so let's pull that up. You know, going all in for a $10 million manufacturing business is really intimidating to me. Leading niche manufacturing and assembly business, custom fabricator specializing in manufacturing of process piping systems from structural steel bases and pipe fabrication to modular piping systems. Okay, I really know nothing about this. After 20 years in business, the owner is ready to retire and pass this jewel of a business off to a new owner. The project management and production team on staff are expected to stay with new ownership. Okay, well, that's good. Um, the multiple is relatively low. That's basically a 2x. 14,000 square foot building, eight employees. Eight employees, yeah, I mean, I guess with the 14,000 square foot, I mean, they're really just... Well, not too low. That's still 18%. I was going to say they're in a low margin business, but possibly not. This is interesting, although it is very vague in what they actually describe. So we don't really have much more about it, and I don't know anything about the pipe pipe business. Ah, uh, here we go. Profitable SaaS quiz maker with four hundred ten thousand dollars of account uh, accounts. Uh, automatic recurring revenue, I guess, is what they're saying. ARR. I say C A R, and I'm like accounts receivable. ARR. Uh, automatic recurring revenue five hundred seventy six thousand in TTM trailing twelve months revenue. So, I mean, I'm guessing. Well, it's factoring for some churn in there. So the churn rate's about twenty five to. 33% on it, probably closer to 33. Um, cash flow in 376, 1.5 mil is the asking price, so they're looking for about four. Gross revenue, 576 grand. So gross revenue to cash flow, pretty solid for a SaaS product. Profitable SaaS quiz maker with $410,000 in automatic recurring revenue, 576, 141 in trailer, trailing 12 months, 376 in SDE. That helps businesses increase leads with quizzes and gain insights via surveys. Makes it simple to share data with your existing marketing tools. Okay, sounds good. Employees too. We have no facilities. Our two full-time employees, two full-time contractors and vendors work remotely. We have no hard assets or inventory outside of our software code base. Okay, um... I like that they're saying two full-time contractors. That way it's not just leaving it, you know, up to imagination where we're left wondering, like, is the two full-time employees the owners themselves? Our product spans several different industries, including lead generation, customer feedback, and marketing data. These industries are very fragmented with industry leaders owning just small percentages. Uh, lead generation competitors, Sumo, Optin, Monster, Hello Bar, Survey, Survey competitors, survey monkey, okay. I'm semi-familiar with these types of operations. Uh, they, you know, when they're saying lead generation here, these are not going for like home improvement remodeling or auto insurance or life insurance, those kind of buyer intent leads. These are going for things where they just want you to get you, where they just want to get you to opt in with name and email address. That's, you know, that's what Sumo's in the business of. That's what Optin Monster is in the business of along with Hello Bar. The SEO foundation of our website is very strong, can be expanded. Our domain rating is 76 as measured by Ahrefs. Cool. I mean, that's great. You know, it's great, but that really only matters if it turns into business. Previously, we had a service side of the software, which added 700K of yearly revenue. This is not included in the revenue listed. We spend very little on page ch pay channels. Okay. So this is interesting. Um, you know, I like digital products. Uh, I like that this thing has been around since 2012. Um, I like the recurring revenue side of it. I think I'm gonna inquire and learn more about this business here. And just says Southwest, I guess that really doesn't matter. What else do we got? Highly reputable moving company. FedEx, established pool route, commercial HVAC company with 4.8 million, 4 million in EBITDA. 
I, I don't know the details, but that actually seems like a relatively low multiple on it. Commercial kitchen cleaning. Now, these businesses are interesting because they don't really require, to my knowledge, any special licensing. Asking 1.25, let's learn a little bit more about this one. Don't miss this opportunity to purchase an established, successful, high cash flow niche business. The model is simple. Kitchen exhaust cleaning, serving approximately 200 stops per month, uh, mostly franchises. Commercial kitchen cleaning is a unique niche service that is nationally required by the federal fire code. I did not know that. This business is licensed, fully bonded, and insured. Where is it located? New York? Services include hood filters, exhaust fans, kitchen exhaust hood, kitchen ducts. Did not know about this. Owner works five nights slash early morning per week. Okay. <laughs> so the owner is out there cleaning these hoods, I'm guessing. All right. And he's earning 411000 you know, for and asking $1.25 million. So uh, established in 2005. There's enormous demand. Yeah. Operating seven days would grow sales of course all right so how many employees do they have 10 uh, i'm surprised to see that the owner is working that much with 10 employees currently operating five days weekly new owner could operate business seven days weekly hence they're going to grow the volume but the 10 people that they've got working probably don't want to cover that seven days so you're going to need to work or you're not needed to work but you're going to need to hire people to actually get into the space I don't know what the owner could do in this business at five nights slash early mornings per week. Like, I don't know if he's playing dispatcher and he's, uh, you know, contacting clients. Maybe they get to a facility and the doors are locked and nobody's there. Who knows? Uh, possibly he's just, you know, sorting out problems and playing general manager, right? So in this number, maybe you could absorb some general management costs. And I think that might be a fair claim to negotiate this asking price down a little. Uh, it's an interesting business and it seems like a good business in business since 05 and the number of employees at 10. Uh, but at the moment, not for me. High-end handcrafted furniture e-commerce store. So somebody's making this furniture and selling it direct to consumer. Uh, just my quick two cents on that. Shipping furniture is incredibly expensive. Tire retreading certified facility. Tire sales and service. This is interesting. I didn't know you could retread tires. Where's this business located? New York. Uh, cash flow 650 asking 4x basically on that. The company is a full-service commercial and retail business that specializes in tire sales, tire retreading. Services include sales, certified retreading, powder coating, and 24-hour emergency roadside assistance. So this is seeming like a pretty regular run-of-the-mill tire shop except for this certified retreading. Brands included are Bridgestone. Okay, they've got the major brands. The business maintains many commercial and government contracts. Vast inventory selection in-house. Retrading equipment paid in full in mint condition. Established over 65 years and operates a 16,000 square foot facility. Real estate is fully owned by a related company. Open five days a week. The business is priced to sell uh, and it qualifies for SBA. So I don't know much about the tire business. Uh, is it intriguing? Yes. If I were looking to move to New York, I would probably be interested in this 50 years in business, 65 years in business seems great. Eight full-time employees, that seems all right. Monthly rent, 5,000. You need to make sure that that is factored into the transaction, right? Either that's factored in, well, I should say fi factored into the financial statements. Well, this seems like a nice business. Um, you know, I'm not really sure what else to say on this one. I, just a space I don't know much about. Let's find one more here. I've still got a lot more of these to sift through. Aviation specialty manufacturer, aircraft and restoration sales. 
Might be a good business. One of the largest toy and gift importers and wholesalers. Uh, I'm not really interested in an importer or wholesaler. Because the trend is basically direct-to-consumer, cut out the middleman. Unless I'm missing something. And maybe there are some things that I'm missing. But to my knowledge, it's not worth sinking time in. Chiropractic and wellness center. It's kind of like the behavioral health thing. I don't really have the expertise in that, nor do I want to have to worry about constantly hiring. Kitchen design and build, no. Manufacturers, representatives, and marketing. This is interesting. Let's see what this business is. Asking 3x on it, a little less. The company is comprised of professional sales representative group acting as a sales arm of manufacturers that do not have an in-house sales staff. It secures placements of products and builds marketing platforms for the manufacturer to local and national retailers, wholesaler, and e-commerce accounts. It does not have any product. It is a paid commission on all invoiced sales. It creates lasting business relationships between the manufacturer and retailer that will continue to produce results. Okay, so I get what they're doing here. They This is fundamentally a company that sells products and gets your products placed into major retailers and e-commerce people. Um, you know, and, and that, that can be difficult to do. It helps if you have connections, right? If you have a product you want to sell and get it placed in a major retail, you kind of need to have a connection here. And this company seems like it's the liaison between it. Company is a 3,000 square foot standalone office plus a 300 square foot storage secure outbuilding. Okay. The company competes in retail program reviews at some accounts with other representatives selling similar to its brand. The company could benefit by merging with, with a company with deeper PPC digital advertising. The company could also grow by adding more manufacturing clients. Um, this business, you know, what I'm thinking here is well, the relationship between your team and the actual end buyers, the retailers, is very key to this business. Th these guys must have some relationships that have been around for a while uh, and have really cultivated them. And with four full-time employees, if some of them you know, up and leave, you could be in a very tough pickle. This is an interesting business, but I would need to really learn more about it to decide if it's a business for me. But this is one that I am very interested in. So uh, we've been recording now. I've been going through these now for about 20 minutes. So I'm going to call it a wrap on this, guys. I hope you guys found this insightful. And if you're interested in any of these businesses, you know, you can certainly freeze the screen and kind of Google the name and find out, you know, or find it on Biz Buy Sell for Yourself and make an inquiry. If you guys have any questions, drop them in the comments below.